Hey guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Anglo Geist. For those of you that are new, welcome. Let's get a little more light on this. That helps a little bit. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much. I really appreciate your subscription. Um, uh, this is the daily forecast for all signs. It's basically a collective energy reading, right? So we, so we share in, uh, collective energy perfect example of this Ukraine situation. Everybody's talking about it. I'm not watching it because it's just too upsetting. And um, it kind of like uh, 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 makes me question my faith in humanity, right? Which I know I'm not supposed to do. It's not a good thing. So I tend to look away from it. Not as if it's not there, right? I think that it's something to teach, show, evolve people through the negative experience that it is, but it's not necessarily an experience that I need to be a part of, if that makes sense, right? But we all share it collectively in different ways. So this reading is similar to that. It's kind of like a reading forecast for the day, right? Um, it is to let you know what energies are out there and available to you that you can either capitalize on, maximize, um, take hope in, or be aware of if they're, say, maybe on the more negative side, um, something that we're not wanting to experience, be aware that they could be out there and then we can act and plan accordingly. It's similar to like a weather report, you know? If we get the, we get up in the morning before commuting to work, we look at the weather report, if there's rain and ice on the roads, we drive a little bit differently through our life, right? So it, depending on what these cards are, it gives us insight into maybe what we can have access to or what we might want to like kind of, you know, adjust so that we can avoid, right? Can't explain it any more clearly than that. <laughs> so, this is originally created for Saturday, March 12th. For those of you that follow along regularly on a daily basis, I build everything off of the Sunday reading. That's how it works. The Sunday is the underpinning big reading of the week, right? It gives you insight into kind of what's going on as the theme of the week for every few days. I will refer back to those cards potentially in this reading. That reading is located at the end of this video in the lower left-hand corner if you want to watch it just to get an assessment of what I'm talking about. Um, for those of you that are just dropping in or seeing this video way out of sequence, right? Like say you're watching it and it is 2026 and it's, you know, January 14th, not even March 12th, right? That's fine. If the reading has found its way to you, listen to it and utilize it. If it makes sense to a situation that's going on in your life, take it and utilize it to your advantage. Let it support you and validate whatever it's saying to you, if it's triggering re a response in you that is positive or emotional or connected, then it's it's your reading, right? And also, I always say this, if it doesn't fit you, right? If it's something that like you're listening to me talk and you're like, no, I can't apply that to any of the areas of my life right now, that's okay too. You may just be working on something different and it doesn't mean that anything's wrong, broken, or, or that you're on the wrong path or any of that stuff. Every path that we're on that we're on and so embrace it as it is even if it's like full of a bunch of crap at this moment but let's let this reading potentially take us and steer us away from said crap <laughs> if possible so another thing i do want to say in the drop down menu beneath the reading is a little bit of house rules always in there is my link tree link in that link shows how to follow me on social media it gives you a couple of places where you can find if you're interested in booking a private reading, private readings are done over the phone. They are more intimate. They are very uh, enjoyable and specific to your very situation. So those are available and payable to the PayPal. So that's always available to you. I want to shout out a couple of people. Yesterday I shouted out Karen. I'm going to shout her out again because I love that she commented. I don't know if she's a regular viewer and subscribed. But yesterday I got a comment in the afternoon from a Lauren, Lauren S., Hello, Lauren. I just want to say hello and thank you for the comment. You seem new to me. If you've been watching me and I haven't known it, noticed yet, you are my, this is the first time you've commented and I did reply and I just want to say thank you for watching. Every time I get like one of those comments, I really get like a boost in my, I don't know, not my ego. It's not an egoic thing. It just lets me know that, okay, maybe slowly but surely this little channel is doing what it's supposed to, right? Because it is in, in the broad scheme of things when I look at other tarot channels, my channel is tiny. So, and that's okay. Tiny but mighty, right? Like, I just want it to make a difference in the world. I want this channel to be whatever it needs to be to support, validate, and heal 
those that watch it. But ultimately, those actions are are yours, right? Your own healing is your own healing. Always never um, take what I say over your own intuition or intelligence, right? Uh, don't let my readings make the decisions for you. Always utilize your own um, intelligence and intuition and when making your decisions. And um, just use my readings as a source of support or validation for what you may already know. Beyond that, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Share the channel out if there's other people. If you like my content and you know other people that may enjoy it, please send them to the channel. It is a bit of a weird name, but I thought it would help it to stand out, and I feel like it does help. I, Geist is my last name, which means ghost or spirit in German. Engel is the German word for angel. So, and I have a bit of an obsession with, not an obsession, but an affinity, I would say, for angels. I believe in angelic presence. I believe in the work that they do, and I believe in calling upon them when we need them. So let's get into this reading and see what's going on. And I need my agents to come in and help grow this channel. There's my call. <laughs> ring, ring. Okay, and you guys are all my angels, you know, all of you that watch. I have to say that. You're angels to me in my opinion. So thank you very much for your viewership. And those of you that comment and, and support the channel in that way. All right, the card for today. Six of Wands. I'll take it. And you know why? Because for those of you that watch regularly, the midweek we had the chariot. And I kept calling it the Six of Wands on steroids. And uh, so it's interesting to me because I associate these two very similarly, right? In the sense that Six of Wands is fire energy. Chariot is Cancerian energy, which is water. But the, the theme of the card is like sort of public recognition, celebration um, at, a, at, a, at a sort of a, a, a public level, right? Six of Wands is about uh, connecting into what it is that we want, who it is that we are, celebrating that and allowing ourselves to be seen and appreciated, right? Or potentially us seeing and appreciating somebody else for who they are or what they are. Now, what the feeling that I'm getting from this as I'm saying this to you is there might be situations in our lives, and I, I don't know if I'm talking to one specific person or many specific people, but there might be situations in our lives that maybe aren't like optimum, right? They're not perfect. They're not, and see, perfect to me is a trap. When you have perfect, perfect is like this idea of like, oh, once I get there, nothing needs to change because it's going to be perfect. And that is against all natural law and all spiritual law everything evolves everything dies everything um you know once death transform once death takes place a transformation takes place and then something new is born in its place that happens throughout nature it happens throughout our universe and so there is no constant one thing that is stagnant i mean if you can find it message it to me please in the comments I mean, you could say, oh, it's a rock, but even a rock dissolves under enough rain, right? A rock may live a little bit longer or span lifetimes on, a, on, on, on the planet for generations longer, but they still change and transform. Crystals grow, rocks uh, erode or crack or break or, or change shape. They become different, right? Plants die, animals die, people die, relationships die. Um, it all is to transform and to evolve to the next phase, right? And so to me, when I look at the Six of Wands, I'm going off on a tangent this morning, Jesus. When I look at the Six of Wands, even if we're in situations, this is for my people that go, well, I'm not feeling celebratory. I'm not feeling noticed. I'm not feeling seen because that would be Six of Wands energy, right? I'm not basking in the limelight right now. That's more of a Six of Wands thing than a Chariot thing. I mean, Chariot is being celebrated, but I feel like Six of Wands is a bit, li little bit more egoic, right? Where we get a little bit more praise involved. Um, if you're not feeling that, what I feel like this card is saying to those of you that might not connect with that idea is that there are situations that are in your life that maybe aren't perfect or they're not ideal or optimum, but finding gratitude and appreciation for them and ourselves within them is key today, right? Celebrating what we have rather than sort of diminishing what we have by focusing on how it's not what we want, 
Does that make sense? And then, oh, Jesus, I could use that for myself, quite frankly, now that I just said that. Like, that popped out of my mouth, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. If I only listened to my own ratings sometimes. Um, so, to me, this is about allowing others to see us, allowing others to praise us, allowing others to lift us up on high and celebrate us uh, for the strong individuals, beautiful you know, even fragile or, or quirky people that we are, right? That's kind of how I see the Six of Wands, is that we embrace all of it. We embrace the good, the bad, the ugly, because he is he is a warrior coming back from battle. He's being paraded through the streets, right? But battle is never pretty. Battle is never easy. Battle is never perfect, right? And so he may have done things in wrong previous to arriving at this celebration or this acknowledgement, but everybody here is heralding him. So if we're not her heralding ourselves and holding ourselves up in our life, then probably nobody's coming to the parade, guys. I'm just going to be honest. So we have to almost be the purveyor of our parade. And let's get that on a t-shirt, please. I am the purveyor of my own parade. Um, but... That's where it begins, right? As we begin to celebrate ourselves, the people around us, the situations, even, like I said, if they're not optimum, if they're not, you know, absolutely exactly where they need to be, maybe we just celebrate them as they are. Celebrate ourselves as we are. Give ourselves a break and not put pressure on ourselves to be perfect, Right? Because that's what this card is about. This card is about, like, you know, putting one, not on a pedestal, but putting one up to be seen for who they are. Battle scars and all. Right? You know, wounds, past hurts, uh, sadnesses, resentments, all of that. I don't want you to, to, to dwell in those things, but I want you to understand that all of those things are a culmination of everything that you are. And that creates the divine sort of presence and being that you are that allows you to be celebrated for everything that you've been through. And to me, this feels like the universe or the world around you wants to celebrate you, wants to acknowledge you, but it won't if we don't acknowledge and celebrate ourselves right? So keep that in mind today. Underneath this from the Sunday reading is that powerful part of the magician, which is number one in the major arcana. Magician is about as above, so below, like creating heaven on earth, creating the existence or the thing that we want, right? The thing that we desire through belief, magic, power, connection to our higher self and our earthbound self, being grounded yet able to access the higher realms and use that to our, our advantage, right? Use all of the faculties of all four elements to create what it is that we want. And here we have wands, which is the spirit. Wands is fire. Wands is driven, right? Wands is focused. Wands is like uh, warm and loving and enjoyable. And yes, a bit egoic, but in a good way, right? We've got, you know, in there is Sagittarius energy, Aries energy, uh, Leo energy, all of those energies, all of those signs are very much, they're warm, loving, kind, generous, but they can also be a bit of a pain in the ass, let's be honest. And I don't mean to offend my fire signs out there, but like Aries can be demanding and impulsive. Sagittarians can be extremely hard to manage. Um, they don't want to be managed. They want to be in their freedom. They want to be flirty. So if you're a monogamous person dating a Sagittarian, you may want to rethink that because Sagittarians need that sort of uh, flirty connection in their life from many sources. Doesn't necessarily mean that they don't love you. It just means that they're fulfilling that desire within them to be appreciated. And Leos are very much that way too, I believe. Leos love that attention. Not necessarily from a sexual level where I feel like Sagittarians are a little bit more sexually oriented. Leos love that sort of, uh, the accolades, but they also love to give, right? Yesterday's stone or two, 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 two days ago was the stone give. They love to give as much as they love to receive. So the wand's energy is about that, like, to me, especially with this card, the wand's energy is about like living in that moment of appreciation of oneself for whatever is going on with us. And allowing others to see us and appreciate us too, even if that feels kind of uncomfortable. You know, sometimes when people pay me a comment, I don't know how to take it because I feel I have my own insecurities and self-esteem issues, right? 
And so I'm, I've just been like lately in the last couple of years, just trying to learn how to just say thank you and acknowledge it. No, don't diminish it. You know, hold on to it and say thank you from a place of my heart and just like take in the compliment because that's how, you know, it's how I'm being perceived. It's not necessarily who I am, but if I'm being perceived that way, then I'm certainly doing something that brings on that perception. So it is a part of who I am in that way. Does that make sense? But then there's that whole other side of the coin, which is what others think of me is none of my business. So not to confuse you but let the accolades in essentially the magician wants us to today the magician wants us to empower ourselves to believe in ourselves enough from a place of spirit so that we can get about to creating whatever it is we want and we can be moving towards that celebratory feeling of um success basically all right so let's get into uh, the Sacred Destiny Oracle. Only two cards fell off the cut. Interesting. Okay, we're back at power. I'll take it. Actually, was this not the card that showed up with... Hold on. I feel like this showed up with the, the chariot. It was the card that showed up with the chariot two days ago. Weird. Okay. So, and I was saying in that reading two days ago that the chariot was six of wands on, on steroids. So we still have this energy working is what this is telling me is that this idea of like sort of personal empowerment, believing in oneself and moving oneself forward from a place of not, yes, assertiveness, but not from like aggression or ego as much as, well, if there's a little ego in there, that's okay because it's a wands card. But it is this idea of these lightning strikes coming down, hitting the ground, being grounded, being inspired, even in stormy skies, right? Even in um, even in moments of doubt or, or, or feeling unclear, there's flashes of light, there's impulses, there's um, higher intuition that comes through to us that I think we can use to our advantage, that we can shine brightly and be who we are and be in our power and embrace that and be okay with that, right? We don't have to fight it, hide it, uh, fear it. So let me read you power really quick. Mountain Thunder. Like the fist of God thrusting up towards the heavens, the stark ragged mountains hold firm as thunderbolts crash down on all sides. The sound is deafening as it echoes from mountain peak to mountain peak. Mountains represent strength, power, and permanence, as well as being pot a potent symbol for attaining spiritual heights. As they extend into the sky towards the heavens, thunder and lightning traditionally represent surging power, enlightenment, and revelations of divine matters. Thunder ignites our deeper self and activates our primal and deep emotions. Together, the mountain and thunder symbolize immense power, vitality, and strength. The sacred landscape wants you to know this is your time. This is your time to claim your power and step into your potential. That's the magician card underneath this, guys. This doesn't necessarily mean that you will be without fear. You might feel uncertain, but do it anyway. Be courageous. Let the world hear your voice. Take a stand. Stand up for yourselves and for others. Share your passion. Teach from the heart. Write with, and your words will have great meaning. Hold your body as if you are incredibly valiant, no, noble, and brave. After all, you are. And that is being heralded in the streets of the Six of Wands, guys. I can't make it any clearer. It's interesting to that to me that all these two cards show up again together, very similar to the Chariot and Power showing up two days ago. It's still trying to remind us that we can step into our belief of self and embrace that and operate within our lives from that place, even amidst stormy, dark situations, right? We don't have to go around cracking skulls, but we need to believe in ourselves, certainly. Now let's go to the grounding stone. And the grounding stone for today to uh, ground in as we move through this day is the word trust. Trusting in ourselves, trusting in our own personal power, trusting in our own strength and our belief in self is going to only make this 
better, stronger, more real. Remember the grounding stone underneath all of this for the week is desire. Trusting in our desire to have whatever it is that we want, that we can create it through the magician, that we can move towards it through the six of wands, that we have the power and the inspiration and the strength to, to uh, bring it about is what we need to trust and ground in that trust. That is your reading today. Thank you so much. Please hit the thumbs up button. Please share this out. Leave a question or comment. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and have a wonderful day. It should be really uh, powerful, intense, beautiful energy. Take care. Bye-bye.